I'm Rudy Schild. My professional bibliography is under Rudolf E. Schild. Um, I'm, for the last 40 years, I've been a member of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. And I'm here because what I'm finding about the nature of the black hole objects in the universe is so amazing and surprising that I thought many more people should know about these and in particular know something about the vital and important role that the new understanding would have to play in any discussion about what's the nature of human consciousness, what's the nature of the human self, in fact, what's the nature of reality in our universe. So I come from it from the point of view of an observational astronomer. So I've been operating the large telescopes on mountaintops for 40 years, and my principal contribution, perhaps, is the determination that the pattern of radiations that we see coming from the innermost region just around the black hole object does not look just as had been predicted by the theor theoretical community, like what you expect from what I would call a technical black hole, the object that has an event horizon. Rather, what we see is something that we had always been taught does not exist, namely a black hole with hair. And the hair goes back to a theorem that basically every graduate student learns the first day of graduate school, namely black holes don't have hair. That's a cutesy way of simply saying the black holes that nature makes don't have magnetic fields because if you have this event horizon at the outer surface of a technical black hole, then no magnetic field could penetrate and therefore there cannot be a magnetic field. So we have a problem. The solution to the problem seems to be that the objects made in nature are a variant of the classical black hole, and we call it a MECO, M-E-C-O, meaning magnetic, eternally collapsing object. And these are alternative solutions of the Einstein field equations, which allow the object to have a magnetic field. And perhaps you know that uh, Stephen Hawking made his big impact in the 70s era when he talked about quantum electrodynamics playing a role in the evaporation of black holes. So in that case, we imagine that there are these black hole objects, but just near their surface, there would be spontaneous emission uh, or spontaneous creation of positron um, neg negative electron pairs. And these would have a finite, though short, lifetime, and they would have effects that amount to evaporation of the black hole. From my point of view, the problem is that Stephen did not go far enough. And if you pursue this idea to its logical end, you realize that when nature was trying to make the object by condensing a very large cloud object, what happened was that the same quantum electrodynamic theory um, that Stephen Hawking cites actually prevented the total collapse to an event horizon. What happened was that as the um, contraction proceeded to higher and higher densities, this spontaneous pair creation built up a pressure and a temperature and this caused a slowdown of the contraction to create an object which now we call the MECO.